record for right okay well since we have a small group and i don't know if it's because we got the link late or what thought it would be really fun for us to do although everybody's putting their pop up right here let's see yay you guys are here sorry i'm crazy it's been it's been a day it's been a day um let's see got recording going all right, I'm going to give it just another couple of seconds here. I was thinking we could either like, you know me, I always give you guys a bonus class. I just can't. I just, I can't not give you a bonus class. There's just too much content, especially around trauma. So I was thinking today, if we have a smaller group, um, then we could do like a live Q&A for this one. And then that will help me see where maybe there's some um, stuck energy or understanding or like you know, some clarity because our, our last webinar class is pretty intense because my goal for you is to give you as, as many tools, um, you know, and confirmations. Cause I know, you know, this, I know, you know, all of this and as many, you know, connectors as possible so that you guys can really start getting into the unwinding part of this, because you know, just because you can't physically get to me to go through this experience does not mean that you're not going through this experience. You know, I'm not that special to be able to like command all of your trauma repair. Like I'm just a shortcut, like I'm the easy button, but you're going through it. You're going through it. And some of you are going to be meeting me in Spain and Ireland in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to be there earlier, obviously, and staying later. Uh, so if, if you guys are part of our, um, transcendence community or our alchemy community, Lee, I would still love to see you guys somehow, if we can kind of create maybe a, like a meet and greet day or go play somewhere, you know, that would be amazing just to kind of connect. Um, otherwise, you know, what I'm hearing so far is that the countries are opening up and the USA is getting its thumb out of a behind and letting people come in now that aren't vaccinated. So again, it was just a matter of practice, prepare, play. Like I literally told some of my favorite people in UK, just book your flight. They're like, well, I can't because, you know, I'm not vaccinated. Book your flight. Like the universe doesn't know unless you are telling, if you are waiting, the universe is waiting. If you book your flight, your universe has to change, you see? So it's all good. Um, let's let's get to the space and see if there's questions first. Like this would be a great segment since it's private and it's invite only for some of you guys to be able to feel safe to share. This isn't like a like a web, you know, like a YouTube web live, even though it will be live, you know, think about this. Is you're all here to shine. Every single one of you came here to shine. And your shine is very different than everyone else's. Um, just because someone's doing it differently or you think maybe someone's got it figured out or someone's louder or brighter, your shine is your secret sauce. And when you get into alignment, when the me, myself, and I are in alignment, you are gonna shine so bright with the uniqueness of you that it doesn't matter if you have the same content or information. The way that you bring it to the world, the way that you share it, the way that your artist flows through you. Hi, baby girl. Oh my gosh, it's getting so big. Uh, it's going to be unique. And the world needs the shine. And here's why. I'm going to just do a little intro and then we're going to take questions. So as you guys know, we are fastly, really quickly integrating the fifth dimension. And for those of you who are like, what's the fifth dimension? It's the new, it's the new platform of Earth. It's the awakened ones who have taken the information and embodied it. So five dimensions is going to be made out of the human body. Okay. When the human body is manifesting from the heart center, when the human body is manifesting from the pineal gland and the left and right hemisphere coming together, turning each other on, you know bring the best out of each other, then there is going to be a, a new you, short for universe, that is going to be birthed out of you. And it's going to be real and it's going to be um, alive and it's going to be co-creative. And there's going to be other people, places, and things in that simulation for you that feel nothing 
like the old paradigm. The old paradigm, third dimension is master and slave, okay? Someone's the boss of you, right? Or you're the boss of someone else, okay? In the fifth dimensional reality is, and it takes, if you look at the number of master number five in numerology, it's chaos. Of course, that's my birth number, chaos. I thrive in chaos. So chaos is actually the way you get to 5D. And it feels brutally wrong when you're going with the flow and all of a sudden chaos hits. You think, no, 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 something's wrong. But I've taught you about echoes. Remember the four echoes. When you level up, when you start facing that last level of your video game, you're going to meet those four echoes. Just like a video game, you're going to get hit by four big bosses. Number one, you're going to lose something that you need. You're going to get hurt or sick or someone around you is going to get sick and hurt. It's going to slow your roll and it's not going to be fun, okay? Someone's going to attack or judge you for being really authentic. We're used to this one, but it doesn't feel good when we're really being transparent and vulnerable, all right? And then the last but not least, we got broke. Oh, something, you're going to lose something, okay? Something breaks, you lose something, get sick, or someone attacks you. There is only four echoes when you level up. That creates a ton of, con uh, of chaos, OK, this chaos is going to feel intuitively like you're doing something wrong. It's designed that way to keep you going back to comfortable, uncomfortable safety. It's designed for you to go question your desires. It's designed for you to go, maybe this is like not the right time to do this. And if you've been in my academy for a few years, you know that what we say is challenge accepted. Challenge accepted, I'm doing it anyways. Just like a child sneaking the cookies off the refrigerator because you want the sweetness of life. That's what the sugar addiction is, is you're lacking the sweetness of life. And you have settled for your allowance of freedom. You've settled for your allowance of joy, which means that it's not enough for a universe to have a one vacation a year and to like, you know, be happy that we paid our bills or, you know, afford one nice meal a month. Like this is not why you came. <laughs> you did not come back for this. You came to figure this game out and master the game so that you do not have a master and slave. Okay. And when you are figuring this out, it will only work if the knowledge that you have gotten from your spiritual trainings and all your certifications embodies, which means, does your big toe know who you are? Does your hands know who you are? Does your heart know who the real you is? Or are they all programmed for where you've been, right? What, what it is that you're desiring, if it's coming from lack, your desire is coming from lack right now, it's the old you. The new you desires to demonstrate. The new you desires to express. So the new you is the artist of the pain, which means the house that you believe that you need to fully be yourself is based in what you want to demonstrate. So focus on demonstrating yourself and the house will appear. Don't wait for the house to be your real self. Well, I won't be myself if I don't have a sunroom, right? I won't be myself if I don't have more closet space. So what you've got to do is demonstrate that true you, where you are with what you have and what you know, and that everything that connects to that demonstration will show up. And it will probably be a lot better than you could even imagine because of what you've been asking for has been waiting for you to be in alignment of it so it could give itself to you, so it could move through you. This is why your state of being determines your reality. It does in 3D and it does in 5D, okay? 5D is just a higher dimensional platform of Earth. Earth is much like your bodies, much like your bodies. It can be very, very primal and destructive and it can be very heaven-like and it can shift and change and grow and, and become. So we wanna really look at our bodies as the micro of the earth macro. And so we take a lot of things that we do organically, intuitively, authentically, transparently, negatively, like your emotions. Okay, who tells 
the Mother Earth to stop having a storm. No one. What do you do? You go, there's a storm coming. You practice, prepare, play for it. You get ready for it. You write it out, okay? And when babies are little, they're having storms. They're pressurized energy. They're expressing. They don't feel guilty for having a tantrum. You do, right? Mother Earth does not feel guilty for having a hurricane, right? You feel that it's a bad thing. But if you start looking at your body as Earth, as the child of Earth, and the child of the cosmos, then you're gonna have to allow the ebb and flow of your seasons to be normal, right? Because we've all been trying to hide and suck it up and fester and store and avoid and disassociate so we would appear normal. Well, what you are doing is you're becoming bigger and heavier and weighting down all of those emotions. And this is why those sweet little empaths that you are lose your stuff at the worst possible times because you just can't hold the storm back. Then you go to guilt and shame. So our last major webinar is going to be about what holds you hostage to your belief systems and your patterns. Like what is reinforcing it? Because there's obviously something. And yes, law of attraction is a culprit, right? Because it's magnetized energy. But there is actually a couple of emotions that are not intuitive to your body that you have adapted from the third dimensional reality that hold you prisoner to the third dimensional reality, okay? It's kind of like growing up with religion. It's kind of a hostage situation, right? And at the basis of religion, two emotions were created to keep you in line. So the shepherd, the pastor, the priest, the nun would be able to navigate the sheep, okay? You guys are not sheep, you're shepherds. So when they find a way to keep you, and when I say they, I mean this chess game we're playing. There's no dark, there's no light. They're just, a, they're really good at this game, okay? They use two emotions that are not part of your genetic makeup. Now, I will tell you that fear is part of your genetic makeup, but it doesn't start as fear, it starts as danger. So danger is probable pain. Fear is the anticipation of loss. It's downloading. Fear, babies fearless, toddlers fearless. Notice they do not begin to learn fear until it's indoctrinated or pushed into them, right? They are not in judgment. They do not see color. They do not see bad or good. They see what they see. And then they're told yes or no by their parents. And then they're like, okay, I thought that was okay. Like just curiosity, right? So fear is learned, but it starts as danger. Remember, like I teach you guys, fire can be dangerous, but you don't need to be afraid of it. You know what I mean? Like, like money problems could be dangerous, but you don't need to be afraid of it. So when you allow fear, then what fear is, is coming from old PTSD. It's coming from when you've failed before, when you've lost before, when you've been humiliated before. And so this planet Earth in the third dimension is governed by two emotions and one indoctrination. The indoctrination is fear. You're going to lose something again, or you better be careful or you're going to lose something, right? And it was linked to your true vibration of love. What's on the other side of love? Fear of loss. Have a baby. Oh my God, I've never loved anything so much in my entire life. <gasps> There's the grief. There's the fear. There's the loss, the impending, oh my gosh, I could lose this child and I just met you and I can't live without you. And moms know what I'm saying. Or if you've fallen in love and all of a sudden you can't see how you can live without this person, you are experiencing love and loss in the same. You are, it's the same quarter. It's a heads and a tails. And it was, it was created to dupe you in to having love be your slave. It's your jail cell. Guaranteed, every obligation you are in right now, every commitment you're trapped in right now is based in love. Guaranteed. You're like, no, I don't love my job. No, you love your house, or at least you love a bed, and that job pays for it. You see? So you've got to maybe go underneath the spectrum and look at where love is your jail cell. And it's not really love 
It's the fear of losing it. That's what keeps you small. That's what turns your shine down. People don't like it when you're too shiny. They, they attack you, okay? Your, your family doesn't like it when you're too shiny. You are shine, right? And if you keep turning your volume up, turning your volume up, turning your volume up, you'll start clearing a path for yourself, right? And realizing that people who are afraid of your shine or angry about your shine are only being triggered because they're not allowed to shine. They've forgotten how to shine. They think shine is bad. They think shine is evil. And that is just a pattern that many, many, many people on this planet are indoctrinated with, all right? Well, your shine is going to haunt you. It's going to stalk you. It's going to keep you up at night. You're going to need to drug it, medicate it, eat it. You know, you're going to need to do everything at this point to keep it away. It's going to be a full-time job because as the planet starts to embody more light, she's clearing things out. She's clearing old, outdated out. She's clearing things out. You know, the water levels are dropping and old civilizations are starting to pop up. And we're like, hey, we didn't even know you were there. Discovery. Same is happening with your body. You are making space in your body for the real you to be embodied. What does embodied mean? Practiced. That's it. Take all the spiritual training that you've spent thousands of dollars on and practice it. Stop teaching it. Stop being a philosopher. Stop teaching a class about it and not doing it, right? Because I know, oh my gosh, the second you read something, it's, it's just gold and you're like, my sister needs to read this. Okay, what I want you to do is put the book down and get the mirror and be like, hey, you, you need to embody this. Your life is going to be very different if you can do this because you think that it's your sister who drives you absolutely batshit crazy. And what it is actually is her pain is triggering yours. All right, because your, her silly little tantrums would mean nothing if you had no pain in your body. You'd just be like, huh, that's interesting. Why is she, okay, she's doing her thing. She's finding her way. It would not have any trigger. The only time you are triggered is if there is a similar vibration inside of you. The storm, holding it back, holding it back, holding it back, holding it back. And that's what your kids grace you with. Your kids grace you with the patterns that you have avoided. Okay. And this is why empaths and sensitives, this is why we trigger the living hell out of our parents, right? All we've done is love them. And they loathe our existence because we are everything that they were not allowed to be. And down to the same effing genetics. So you are like looking at their genetics like challenge accepted and you're starting to live as if and they're like, oh no, they're jealous of you. That is so sad, but that's a, that's a pain body personality. Jealousy, watching and some parents are living vicariously, like go, 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 but they're not allowing that unique soul to be their own soul, which is another form of damage. Remember, perpetrator and victim. So when we talk about the two emotions that do not belong to you, that you have used to keep yourself in jail, this is your jail cell, shame and guilt. That's it. And then fear of loss. Well, I better not go live my dreams because what if I can't pay my mortgage, right? I better not write this book because what if someone sees it? You know what? I can't post what I really want to say on Facebook because, you know, I'm going to get attacked. I can't wear what I want because, you know, my husband's going to be upset with me. I can't eat what I want because we don't have the money. You see, everything I just said is a bullshit story, but it's all governed by shame and guilt right? Well, we don't want to buy that because I should be paying my mortgage instead of buying art supplies. That's governed by shame. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be responsible. Well, I'm saying, hell yeah. Responsible, the ability to respond. Not some grown-up idea where you have to stop being Peter Pan and go to a real job, right? No, you are here to be a professional child, which means as the higher self in you steps into the driver's seat and starts to nurture the inner child and ego becomes the personal assistant. It becomes the, you know, the, the 
coffee maker and the bill payer and you know the shoe tire and the driver this is when your life will start to flow when ego is deciding who you're attracted to deciding what you do for a living deciding whether or not you get to go where you want to go that's when higher self is like i'm not a match to that so higher self will be in the back seat or outside of the car and the inner child is being raised by the ego identity or the pain body. And this is why every single person that I have met who has lost their shine does not let their child play. All right. So that's just my two cents. And we're going to be our final webinar, which will be next week. We're going to dig into guilt and shame because your trigger is constantly trying to use guilt and shame to be a good person. So it has actually service. See, as a healer, which we know we're never healing you, we're just uh, holding space for you to heal yourself. We understand that guilt and shame doesn't exist, but we have used it as a form of service to show up and be good people, okay? And when you use the lowest vibration emotion to be a good person, you are going to suffer immensely. Now, there's a flip side of this because there's a perpetrator and a victim. So you're like, I feel ashamed and I feel guilty. Well, guess what you also do? You shame and guilt your people. Don't tell me you don't. Well, I guess you just don't love me. You must not love me if you just said that, right? How could you do that? Shame and guilt is part of the personality of the train of the pain body. So you do shame people, whether it's with your tone of voice, with your gaslighting, with your stonewalling, with whatever it is you're doing, and you're probably very unaware that you're doing it because obviously that's the unconscious. That's the beta brain running, running, running. I must protect myself. I must defend myself. I must be seen and heard. I must be, I must be allowed to speak. Okay. And so when you are governed by shame and guilt, you are also a shame and a guilter because the bully, the bullied always, always needs a bully. So you will find someone that is allowing of you and you will be shaming and guilting them. And you should not be ashamed of yourself at all because it's literally just the pattern. None of this, none of this is to be judged. It's all about recognition, like, oh, shoot, who do you shame and guilt, right? Mm, right? You could be doing it in just passing or judging on social media, like they should feel guilty for posting that. If I have to feel guilty, they have to feel guilty. Okay, well, where's your spiritual training right now? Because that's not showing up as the embodiment of you. So with 5D, you walk through chaos and you start becoming a farmer. All right, we're going to talk a lot about farming next week because you are a seed. And so, of course, you are put in your best fertilizer or manure so that you could grow properly. Okay, so let's get some questions here and let's see where where we are at from the last two webinars before I, you know, go super light speed again. Let's take the last two topics. The first week was really all about that pain body itself, like how it was built, what it is, right? Second week was the true the true way to manifest your reality in rhythm and balance and harmony of the masculine and feminine. Because again, I want to show you the pain body, but I'm not a teacher that's like, here's the problem. I want to be the solution as well. Like guys, this is why we're doing the work because of how intuitive your body is and how deeply it's ready to manifest for you. Remember manifest everything that you have been desiring to be, right? The embodiment of your true soul, shining and feeling safe with it, right? So number one thing I see with empaths and sensitives, why they don't shine, they don't feel safe. They don't feel safe. We talked about this last week too with your posture. When your posture is in, 
you're pushing energy into you, which means that it's very difficult for you to have boundaries because you feel everyone's stuff. So you start sympathizing and healing and, and helping and, you know, and all these things, or you just fight, flight, friend, fall and friend, you know, you, you're a out of there. You're like, I can't be around those people. They're low vibration. Well, guess what? The only thing that you notice within them, if you notice a low vibration within them is they triggered the low vibration in you, or you wouldn't notice. Okay. You would not notice. It would be neutral. That word new to my reality. You'd be like, okay, well, you're obviously upset, but I believe in you because you're awesome. Right. You would not be like, oh my gosh, my whole world is going to crumble because now my worth is being triggered. If you didn't have shame and guilt and you did not have fear, you guys would not be walking around like you're not worthy. You wouldn't even have that. You wouldn't even know what that word is because when I've channeled the inner child, the child's like, I don't even know what that word means. So the inner child looks at what you believe as unworthiness or undeserving as you're not allowed. That's how the inner child sees worth. Either I'm allowed or I'm not allowed. So if you were in a family where your brother was allowed to do something and you weren't, you're going to grow up thinking that men are allowed to do things that you're not. And you're not going to believe that consciously, but your brain does. I know I have two brothers. Okay. So let's pull some questions for today. Anybody just either raise your hand or unmute themselves. It's first come first serve. Nothing's off limits. This is a good, this is a good way to practice not being afraid and not being feeling the shame for the question that you have, because the question that you have, everybody has. We all have the same stuff. Anyone? Dominique? Hey, yeah. Hey. No one else. So uh, up close, I'm very broken out. So I, hey, I hope- you're beautiful. Don't shame yourself. <laughs> so, well, I'm in our alchemy group on Facebook yesterday, another video. I don't know if anyone uh, viewed oh, it. Oh, I, I saw it, but I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. That's okay. The rash, the eczema rash is everywhere and worse again. Um, mm. Oh, that's fun. So I've been trying to like reflect more on like what I want. And like, I thought today, almost like an epiphany moment I had when I reviewed the video that you would responded with covering the eczema and like like the deeper layers of that um, you had mentioned, which you've mentioned to everyone that like we're uprooting the unconsciousness. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking of my Christina in the grass where like the sick child in mm-hmm. me, you know, that I, that is present now that I, you know, I've collected and like now I'm like, okay, well, what is this sick child able to do? What does she want to do? So like, I'm having to, really like let go of my office and my business and stuff so but then like I think of the layers of how like well I never really worked my business am I really unhappy because I never succeeded at it you know in my mind and things like that so I'm trying to balance or at least discern between going forward doing what I want to do versus still trying to do things out of lack and trying to understand which one of those is correct so I can like follow that right path. So that's yeah. been, that's been a little hard for me. Um, yeah. Because I'm still broke, you know, and like whatever. Right. Um, right. So yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this question. What is it that you really want to do? That's what I'm trying to decipher. So, um, mm-hmm. so I know for me, like, I know that, and I posted this as well under my video, just reflecting, reflecting, and sharing, like I have known for a while that I held back on letting my office go because I didn't want to fully commit to this new life that I was like finding myself in because I got there from my patterns of like, fuck it. And just, right. you know, right. getting stuck in there. And I'm happy in many ways here and I enjoy the lifestyle here. But when I think about like things I want to do in my life, it's not here, you know? So right. it's, mm-hmm. What do I want to do? Like, I feel like if I'm going to build my life in the old life, you know, the new life in the old Mm -hmm. life, Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable and safe doing that here. And I'm, I'm comfortable and okay with however it unfolds. It will, because it kind of like, it always does like Mm -hmm. obvious to everyone, but 
I don't know if I'm playing it safe still because I don't really want to just drop everything and abandon everything and go somewhere that I've never been and just start Which, yeah, that, that would yeah. not, that would just be flight. You know, you'd just be running, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the drive, where is it really coming from? I'm, I'm you know, chipping away mm -hmm. at. Um, and I've just, I've, I've been toying with the idea of jumping into an ice bath. <laughs> Oh, for my Hallelujah, people. praise Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll set you free, girl. One well, five, okay. Go five, ahead. Five, what you yeah. finish what you were thinking. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that's basically like everything that's kind of ruminating around in my okay. mind. It's it seems like <clears throat> it seems like it's really kind of like you're really like taking stock, and that's and that's awesome. So one thing you said, and I want everyone to kind of really pay attention to this, is that you said you feel safe here right to create i mean it's not ideal it's not everything you want but here is the missing or the sweet spot let me refrain here's a sweet spot when you feel safe in your own body okay you could be like i said in a jail cell with a serial killer with someone who tries to slit your throat every single night of the week if you felt good and safe in your own body which means trusting you okay then the place that represents you, which you might not even know who that is yet, will present itself, okay? Because again, remember, 5D is the universe within that we grow out of us. Like it's, it's literally like the money, the success, the shine. It's like we have to chip these wares of the pain body away. And then that you, the real you, it starts to, to starts to embody itself, which means you just show up differently in the same old situations. Like, yes, you're living there, but your circumstances have nothing to do with who you are as a creator, right? And I think it's actually great for you to let stuff go because you are a lot like me where, and I know I taught this in alchemy and I want you guys to all just for shiz and giggles, study the seven deadly sins right? And this is not a religious story, but it is an indoctrination of our, our old world. And the number seven is pride. And this is the one that I see my spiritual community the most getting stuck in. Because just like you, Dominique, you know, I've been through this. We build, we build, we know we're good at what we do. We have so much to offer. We've studied, we've certified. We know that we have this brilliance. We know what we're capable of, but then somehow the money's not there or the support's not there. And so we end up having to kind of get our pride kicked in. But if pride is a part of the seven deadly sins, right, then you letting go of your office that you weren't really sure about for your ego looks like failure, but for your soul, it's making space. You see, so it's like ego's like, well, I had to give up my office. No, no, no. I let that old version go that I wasn't super sold on. Okay. And what I just did was I created more space. And when I create more space, then the real me has more of a playground, even if it's just nothing, right? Because I know you guys have all experienced this when you hit rock bottom or you've lost something or you have a you know a major like plot twist and something leaves your life, there's this, like, maybe it's just three or four seconds of oh, anything's possible right now. The infinite possibilities returns when you create space. So when you have one foot in, one foot out, right, then what's happening is the universe is looking at you like you have too much abundance, not the lack that you're experiencing. <laughs> it's too much. And so the universe holds back money and help and support because you already have too much weight on you because the universe does not categorize money and offices and jobs and certifications and boyfriends and bills differently. It's just abundance or lack, right? And most of us who hit that pride, our cup is so full of what we don't even know we want. You know what I mean? It's like, our cup is full of the old self that we've been stockpiling because we were going to like try to build ourselves out of that mess. And then when you start to really, really, really go inward and you go, I don't even know if that's me. Right. I don't, I don't know if I really want to do that. I don't know. I mean, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. 
but to let go of something, right? That could potentially make you money or could potentially allow you to do something that you're just really intuitively good at. That feels unsafe unless, unless you feel safe in your body. And this is what your eczema is about. It's about bringing you back to yourself. It's like your body is saying, no, 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 don't look over there. Look in here. No, no, no. I am literally going to irritate the living shit out of you so that you pay attention to me. Like I am going to itch you to death so that you can't look anywhere else except this pain. Right. I know my son was born with it covered head to toe. And so I did a lot of research on eczema. And of course, you know, there's third dimensional reasons, diet, blah, 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 environment. But ultimately, it's either a detoxification or an allergic reaction. And yes, you can be allergic reaction to your own ego and other people's egos and your home and yourself and all kinds of other things. And so when you step back as you've been doing, which is fabulous, and you act as the observer and you go into a metaphor instead of the story, right? We can look at the butterfly in you says, I just made space. Okay. The caterpillar in you says, I just failed again. I just closed another business. Right. And so if you looked at it through the butterfly's eyes, now you just lightened up. Now, like whatever you were paying on rent or not paying on rent is now no longer a burden. And yeah, you might have shame and guilt attached to it in your pain body about whatever story, but ultimately you're lightening up. And so if your bodies are in pain, you guys, it is saying, don't look out there, look in here. Don't give that man attention. Don't give that attention. Don't look over there. Look right here, right? What am I itching to do? And the only reason why you are not 100%, like I know exactly what I want to do is because you're not allowed to do it yet. You're not allowed in that inner child's belief. Like children feel unmotivated to play if they're not allowed, right? Or if they've, they've fallen out of practice with play. Like remember your, your, your inner child frequencies, consistency, keep your word to yourself. And contribution to yourself, right? And there's also like loyalty and compassion and all those things. But ultimately, there's going to be times where you don't want to play because you're just not feeling it. You don't know how. Do it anyways. Okay. Like again, the new you isn't going to have motivation. Motivation comes from survival most of the time. So whenever anybody comes to the house, I say, what is the motivation that gets you out of bed in the morning? Right. And they're like, well, this and this and this. That's all caterpillar motivation. That's pay my bills. That's, you know, be successful at work. That's, you know, do what I'm supposed to do. So, you know, I, I can keep these relationships. But the motivation inside of you is false, false identity of, of not, it's, it's coming from lack. So when you guys have noticed this, and this is one of the 911 calls I got all year in alchemy class for him was, I don't have motivation to pay my bills anymore. What am I going to do? Like, I don't even care about working anymore. I don't care about any of this anymore. And what happens is when higher self gets into your body, it does not care about your bills. It cares about you. It cares about play. It cares about creating. It cares about community. It cares about unity. It does not figure out how it can pay its mortgage so it can stay there. Because the way a higher self looks like is if you can't pay your mortgage, it's because you're not supposed to be there, right? Or maybe you need to start playing and get paid to be yourself. So that's where the shame and guilt is haunting. That It is literally keeping you in a jail cell. So all I would advise right now, since you do have a, a lot of clarity right now, and you are observing this, is talk to your itching, Okay. Tell me what you're feeling. Look at the metaphors. I know we kind of talked about this last time, but itching to be alive, itching to grow, right? Itching to thrive. Because anyone who gets stuck in pride on their spiritual journey, right, really is secretly just wanting to be proud of themselves. So anyone with a big pride is being haunted by shame and guilt. And it's where the fraud complex comes from that's bullshit. Because, you know, just like you and me, like we're good at a lot of this spiritual stuff. Like we know it. But then when we think sometimes, okay, well, I'm teaching this, but I'm not living it. Right. Or I'm telling my client to do this, but I'm not doing it. All right. That's how you can figure out if you are embodying it or not. 
right? So how it's going to work in 5D is that you speak less and you do more. And then your essence is watched and learned, right? How it was always supposed to be. We're not supposed to talk people into enlightenment. We were supposed to embody spirit and then demonstrate and express and show up and live. So in this space of where you are, my question for you is, I know you said this environment is safe and comfortable. It's not your ideal situation, but here, let me play devil's advocate. What about this environment that you're in does not make you feel safe with yourself? With myself? Uh -huh. What about your environment triggers you to not feel safe to be truly authentic? What is in your environment that's saying, yeah, you're, you have a head, you can sleep here, you can live here, but you can't be yourself. And again, it doesn't mean that someone's saying this, it's just something you feel. Um, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm able to be myself, but that can't be true if, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> well, okay, so let me, let me, let me call you on that one. All right, so in your root, I matter. Do you feel like you really matter in that space? I'm, I matter more than I realized recently. Good. Like, okay. Safe role. Are I, you free to create sexually, physically, creatively, the way that your true shine is in this space? Um, no, not fully, but I... Okay. It's okay. It, just honesty is better here. Because what I'm saying is, is that in order for you to feel safe inside of you, you have to be able to live as yourself, right? And this is why when we're alone, we feel so free because I can demonstrate, I can express, I can share, I can walk, I can love, I can do all of these things. But if someone is watching, guaranteed, if you guys feel, any of you feel right now that you cannot turn your volume all the way up, I want you to find whose eyes you're looking through because you're looking through someone's eyes at yourself to turn yourself down. OK, this is where it all is. It's like when we were kids and we were truly acting a fool and being alive, somebody was looking at them through their eyes and telling us either they're wrong or right. And so you don't grow out of that. You feel like you grow up where you're allowed to do what you want, but you will just attract another set of eyes. OK, so and again, you don't have to share this publicly, but just think about whose eyes are not in full agreement of your, all of your shine. Just, it's just a witness, okay? Who is gonna look at you and go, mm, you be yourself, but not like that, right? Or that hurts me if you do that, right? And again, then it gets into that obligation, commitment, survival, guilt and shame program. So then if you go to your demonstration, your solar plexus, how much of you, true, authentic, are you really able to demonstrate in that environment? Now, I'm not saying in that house. I'm saying in your story. Because your story is the people, places, and things that you live with, right? That's your time, relationships, health, and money. How free are you to demonstrate all of you? Okay? I'm just, this is just reflection. Then you go up your heart. How free are you to love with all of your heart, the, everyone that you love? Or do you have to hold back when you look through someone else's eyes? Or are you feeling that you're not receiving what you are willing to give? All right. Then you go to the throat chakra and you say, how free am I to express who I am? Express is not just write or talk. It's literally your dance. It's your soul song, okay? Your, your third eye, how free am I to truly see myself through the eyes of this space, right? Crown, how free am I to truly, truly get to know me when I need to know you, all right? Because think about it. If I get separated from my root chakra and all of a sudden I don't feel like I matter, which 
I am matter, then every other chakra is going to be influenced by I don't matter, which means that your manifestations, the people you date, the house you live in, the job you have is going to either be a search for I matter, an attempt to matter, an attempt to be mattered by someone else. And this is why higher self for a lot of you is literally giving you a huge cup of self-love through tough love, itchy bodies, right? Money problems, relationship troubles, jobs coming and going. It's the chaos. So on the way to 5D, you're going to hit all the chaos, right? And so if we look at eczema from like a, a metaphorical state, it's inflammation, which means, let's just be honest, you're effing pissed. You're pissed that you can't be yourself. And, and I think you're aware of it. It's not like I'm sharing anything you don't know. Okay. You're itching to live. You're itching to go and be and have and do because you know that you deserve it. You know, deep down you do. And because you're starting to see the evidence of it, it's like, now you want, it's even more itchy. All right. Now the itchiness is going to spread just like eczema. It's going to go to every chakra because when you think I can matter, well, then I want to be creative in that space. And then I want to demonstrate. And so now just like eczema, it spreads to every chakra. And so you are at the end of this story, Dominique, not the beginning. And that's why it's so awesome, but it's always the worst because you're getting to the end of this story with yourself. You've been avoiding it and avoiding it and, and playing small because of your indoctrination of your fear and your shame and your guilt, why you have been you know, pioneering this new world in your spare time and choosing yourself. But ultimately, you guys, I want you right now to think about being your truest, authentic self and then look and find the eyes in your life that you can't do that with. They could be your kids, your partner, your parents. It could be your job. You have to locate that because as long as there's a set of eyes that are judging who you are that might pay your bills or manage your life or tell you what to do or be dependent on you, you're gonna, you're gonna play small and you're not going to like it. And that's what inflammation is. It's irritation of the soul, okay? Now, another thing I said, again, is that we are very neck deep in our unconscious patterns in the universe, which means that in order for us to lighten up and to ascend and to be the higher self-embodied, we have to dig out and unpack all of our unconscious patterns, OK, so a lot of this stuff, you guys, if it, eczema, if you look at the karmic signature, burned alive at the stake, right, burned for your belief systems, OK, like infuriated over the injustice, that's what's going to be in your karmic akash if you're manifesting this particular body issue. Now, when we look at you, very Joan of Arc energy right here. Right, I could totally see that happening in another timeline. All you have to do is embrace it, like probably did happen. And your higher self is like, don't let that happen again. Do not get burned on the stake for your beliefs. Just embody them. And then your embodiment will empower. So that's why I was saying in alchemy class, guys, find a safe space because you will not come out of your cocoon if the environment wants a caterpillar. All right. Now, how you're going to do that is you're first going to become aware of why you're not dialing it up. You know, why you don't know how to play anymore or why you, you know, feel the guilt and shame. Because again, it's like when people that we love are jail cell, that, you know, it's, it's, and I understand where you're at because there's a lot of things you love about your life. You know, you have created, most of us have created a pretty decent life for ourselves. And there's a lot of things that we love. And then that shame comes in. Well, I should be happy with where I am. Most people don't even have this. That's bullshit. That's a mediocre belief system. And you are all extraordinary. But the mediocre mindset entraps you. It keeps you human. Now, you are a human being, which means the being is the soul in the human body. And you're here to tell your body who the hell you are, 
and it will model whoever's driving. Okay, so when I say any of that, does anything come up you want to share further or does that resonate? I mean, everything resonates and like, like, I don't know if you can see me nodding my head the whole time. I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. that. That's my nice. sense. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I'm almost like, I don't know. I don't want to be comfortable with eczema to where like I'm just gonna ignore it, but <laughs> like I can't ignore it. Yeah. Um, not like I'm not as scared anymore, but um, like. I don't Let me ask you a question. Why haven't you done the ice bath? What's your resistance on that? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is like, should I have someone help me like take me out if I like I don't know. There, I there it is, right there. Uh, you don't feel safe with yourself right I, there. Yeah. You don't feel safe with yourself. Yeah. Okay. I want you just to look at that right now as a belief system. It's not true, but you're going like, you're sitting here burning alive and I'm telling you, go to the other side of the extreme to find relief. And you're saying, well, I'm going to need someone to help me. Okay. What that tells me is that you are not your parent yet. Okay. Me, myself, and I, your higher self, is the parent of that child. And this is why when we do go into our temperature therapy with quantum fitness, the intention is, is ultimately the strength, the strength to get in it and the strength to get out of it, which means that your intention is, is to be free of this pain, free of this story, okay? Another thing that ICE does after several minutes is it 100% reboots your immune system that is obviously compromised. So again, when a chronic illness, inflammation, rash, fever, whatever is persistent, what your immunity is saying, I, uncle, 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 okay? And it's because it's working 24 hours a day on your fight or flight, on your just basic survival. So then when you actually get sick, it's like, oh my gosh, it's all happening and I can't do it. So what you have to do is you have to go to factory reset. So factory reset your immunity and see now your body has something to live for because it thinks it's dying. I know that sounds scary and horrible, but your body will be like, I'm alive. And when you get out of this ice bath, you're going to feel like a million dollars and your endorphins, this hormonal freeing is literally going to make you feel so alive that the reason why you have eczema is because you can't live, okay? So, and the resistance on that is, well, am I gonna be able to do this by myself? Okay, well, you're sitting here having eczema by yourself, which is a million times worse because a nice bath might be three minutes. This is 24 hours, okay? So, what I'm saying is it's not the ice that's going to heal it. It's the intention to let go of this pain, right? It's itching. It's sucking the life force energy out of you. I know when you're in pain, it's all you have. There's no, it's just like being hungry. It's all you can think of. Like I'm hungry. I need to eat before I do anything else. I'm in pain. I need to get relief before I do anything else. It's consuming you. So what you want to do is when you are insanely in pain, you want to go do the extreme quantum leap, which is the other side of the spectrum. And then you work yourself back into warm. You bring yourself back into balance. And I guarantee you, whether you do this by yourself or you recruit someone to help you, I personally, because you're not able to get to me, I believe that when you go through the ice, if you do not have a set of eyes on you that is so in belief about you and so 100% your cheerleader, you do not want their eyes on you because you will have test-taking anxiety. You will suck at it, all right? You do not want someone who is has an opinion about you to witness you going through your reboot. This is why when I take someone through, it's like I am midwifing this experience because I am holding space for their greatness with no judgment. Don't care how long they stay. I'm not, this has to happen. So if you have a set of eyes on you, that's like thinks that you're small or weak or what the hell are you doing? Okay, I'll be in here in case you freak out. 
Like you're going to see how much you are to yourself in this process. Because like I said, you guys, if you don't have someone who can doula this, do it alone because your doula is your higher self. And you will not let yourself be hurt. Okay. You have instincts that are survival and you will sit in there until you are done. And then you will get yourself out. Okay. I have had people in their seventies come to the house and not need help getting in and out. All right. And it wasn't because they were stronger. It's because their intention was solid. Okay. And every time you say, I can do this by myself. I have me, myself, and I, and how many other personalities do I have? I mean, there's at least nine of you that are in the bathroom with you, okay? You have an army of, of spirit and body that loves you the most. Your body loves you the most. Your soul loves you the most. Your inner child loves you the most. No one is going to love you the way you are going to love you. And so if you can show up and do hard things by yourself, you will turn pride into proud. And that's when you get set free. When you turn pride, I've got this, I know this, to I'm so proud of myself. Then it becomes the childlike wonder. And, and then you're like, I don't know why I wasn't doing this before, right? And that is going to see, you're going to see how brave you are. You're going to see your courage. You're going to see your strength. You're going to see your self-love. You're going to see that you can be there for yourself. Because when we get caught up in codependency of people, places, and things in our life, we really believe we can't do this. We really believe that we cannot do this by ourselves. And you are an entire universe. This is like Earth saying, no, I need Mars to get me out of here. Earth is like, I got this. You stay in your lane, right? Because I have had this ice experience with my partner. And I've noticed that I do better in the ice when I'm by myself. Because his eyes are looking at me. And I have that old story, at least before I had it, where I freeze when people are watching me do something. And I'm like, oh, I can't do it. Now, now someone else might get extra courage when someone's watching them, which is a very masculine thing. Like someone's watching me. I am stronger. Right. But that's not that's not what you want here. You want to just me, myself and I, we're doing this because we love ourselves. We're not abandoning ourselves. We're, we are brave and we are strong, right? And it is some, it's like, it's, it's a super fast way to reboot metabolism. It is a super fast way to reboot your immunity. It gives you something to live for, Dominique. When your life has been a series of what's the point and it's not fair, what, I mean, what else? Your body's got no motivation other than just to survive another day. And so you're going to itch to death. So this is a fast way to move yourself into that like winter, like the leaves fall and the old you dies away and it resets. Because when you're in ice for longer than a couple of minutes, your body thinks it's dying, right? Which you're not. And so it kills everything away that was dying. Everything. Disease, in infection, old cells that have mutated, right? Your colon gets a shock, your skin gets a shock, your gut gets a shock, your lungs get a shock, your heart gets a shock. It's like, boom, bringing you back to life. And when you get out of it, you're like, oh my God, I'm alive, I'm alive. And your body's like, we're alive. And it's like a child who is at Disneyland. And I know everybody who's experienced the ice knows exactly what I'm feeling because it gets quite addictive. All right. So that's what I'm, that if you notice that missing piece in your entire story for all these months has been the bravery to hold space for yourself. That's it. You are good at holding space for everyone else. You're a healer. You're a practitioner. But what you are doing is saying, come home to me and hold space for me. Okay. Thank you. Does, yeah. does that resonate? Yeah, perfectly. And like, I know, and I, I know I, I know I can and will end up doing it myself and I want to do it myself just for the <laughs> Well, you're gonna run out of options, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And I and I'm so like and I definitely have my own way of like playing with my self-care and actually holding space and you know when I'm alone it's easier, obviously. Right? I know. I'm telling um, you. We shut right. down when someone's eyes are watching. 
Right. Or like if I can't do it, if someone else is in the house, even. In right. You don't even want to. It's right. like we want to dance, but someone else is there. We're like, nah, I don't want to dance. <laughs> right. Um, mm -hmm. Like, and there are things that like, I definitely had my own little karaoke show with my boyfriend. Good. Like I definitely like do things. Um, but, and I'm thinking now with the ice bath, like just a couple of questions that are either me like holding myself back or just like, do I need to submerge myself because I physically mm -hmm. don't know if I can in the size tub I have. So I'm like, that's where I was like, well, should I just seek out people that are doing these in like a little group? You know, like a, I've seen those online or whatever. And I know blah, blah, blah. I'm going to end um, up. Yeah, go ahead. Finish. I, I just, yeah, I feel like I'm just going to end up filling up my tub with ice and just doing it. And, and, yeah. ever, like, and you're, and just over, you're overthinking this, right. you know, like, again, guys, this is all placebo. It's the intention to do it. Right. You know, and like when I first started with quantum fitness, I didn't have an actual bug bathtub. I had one of those little portable blow up like rounds. And so you couldn't get your whole body in it. And of course, you know, if you go through the whole protocol, by the end of it, we're all, we're submerged, but it's, you're building up to it too. What I want you to remember about ego is, is that it lives in a state of perfectionism or I don't want to do it. And what you have to understand here is that you're getting really vulnerable and real with yourself and you're going to suck at this. Okay. You're going to be horrible at this in the beginning. And then it's going you're going to have success and you're going to get stronger and better. So what I say is, is like when you start overthinking about like, how's it going to be if I get submerged, putting one foot in the water is more than you've done before. So when you look at the eyes of a child, it's like, just be proud of yourself. Be proud if you got one foot in. Be proud if you, if you did better than you thought you would. And if you did horrible, say we can try again another time because ice is pretty cheap. You know, wait for your next moment to be alone, put some music on, right? Set a solid ass intention of what you're ready to let go of, right? Tell yourself, I am here. I am not abandoning you. I am not rejecting you. This is not a punishment. This is to help us let go of old pain that is not serving us where we want to go. This is lightening our load. This is rebooting. This is allowing us to be who we've never been allowed to be. And then just with grace, do what you can do in that moment and be proud of yourself because you need a mother and a father in that ice. The mother is to let you know she is not leaving. And the father is like, I'm so proud of you. And with that, the child will come alive and be like, oh, my God, I did it. And because the child is being resurrected from a slow death of no fun, then you're going to notice a huge amount of energy coming through your body, right? And then you practice and prepare and you play that. Even if you have to just do it by, when you're by yourself, wait for someone to leave and then practice, prepare, play, right? Exhaust yourself. So when they come home, you know, you're so tired, you can't do anything, can't argue, can't buy, you know, you just love on them or whatever. And this is how you do it is you wait for me and myself and I to be the intervention in the family that you're looking for. Do not need outside opinion. Now, when you say groups of people that are doing this, here's, here's why I don't like that idea for this particular story is because what you need is you. OK, and as soon as we get into a group, now the influence, whoever is the strongest influence in that group is going to run the show. You know, and then there's comparison and then there's also group misery. Misery loves company and you have what needed to come home to you. This needs to be either a solo or a mentored experience. Right. So like when I'm holding space, I'm not there. I'm speaking through the inner child and the higher self and the ego. and I'm. I'm pulling out inside of them. I don't exist in that moment because if I exist, this observer effect and in quantum physics, it changes the platform for the timeline. I cannot interact as Jess. I interact as what I'm perceiving. And then that person is able to go, yeah, I'm feeling that. Or yeah, I wanted to say that, or here it is. Sometimes I say nothing, right? So for you, you're going to have to act as mother, father, and child. And like, we need to go in here and together 
make an intention that when we're doing this, it's not because we have nothing else that we can do. We do this because we choose ourselves and we've always abandoned ourselves for other people. And, you know, we, we, we've always, you know, felt safer in the group, but this time it's about feeling safe with yourself. And if that just means one leg goes in today, guaranteed you'll be back at it because it'll call you like that competitive masculine inside of you will be like, I know I can do better next time. And it's in your own little world. And next time you do better. And then the next time you do better. It's like, we need to stop putting the perfectionism of having to get it perfect the first time. Because what happens is we do nothing. And then we do nothing. We fail every day instead of failing once. You see? So it's really about stepping out of the story and being like, this eczema is about an intervention of my family, me, myself, and I. My body wants me to come home. My soul wants to be in this body. My ego is exhausted right? And the solution here is to match the frequency of the pain, which is ice and cold and freezing, and then warm yourself up, right? You can get like one of those like um, infrared sleeping bags for 99 bucks or something to crawl into, right? Like I have in the bathtub, I have a duckies, I've got toys to hold on to. Like we've got it all in there because again, it's me, myself and I in there. And that's all you have to do is say, this eczema is going to be gone when I create a happy family of me, myself, and I. You don't have to trust each other first. You don't have to like each other first, but you are stuck together. And when this becomes unified, watch your abundance and your freedom grow, even when you're in an unfree, non-abundant environment, okay? Because it's going to grow out from you. It's the, it's the triangle. It's the strongest force. And when the triangle comes back together, me, myself, and I, you guys, you become invincible. You become unlimited. So if things are not flowing right now, look at where you have a, a weak link. It's either with the child, it's the masculine, or it's the feminine. When all three of those have united trust and the, the same intention, you're going to move mountains, like with no money and no help and no time. And it's just going to happen. You're going to be like, moving the Red Seas. And you're like, that's all I needed to do for this whole time was integrate 100%. So go ahead. So when we talk about like every seven years, the cells are like, okay, who are we? Got it and download. So even like the programs from the cloud. Mm -hmm. So do we do override that and write new programs through the practice prepare play? So like if my ice reboots me and I'm a newborn Mm -hmm. that's how I get to choose and right you got to show up as the new you you can't show the only thing that's going to download the cloud download the old pain back into the body is if you act like the person you used to be because the universe is looking at who you are who you believe you are so if you go okay my old pattern was you know I would do this do the opposite right? Or find another way to pause yourself and go practice something else. Because one of the things that we do in in quantum fitness is on our day two, where we have our break is I have basically like a acting teacher and she comes in and helps you really establish this new version of yourself. Even though you don't really know who that is yet, you do know how it feels. And so she starts kind of evoking this, okay, who is this? How does she dress? How does she feel? How does she live? And then that becomes part of your symbols. We create symbols, we create anchors. We're using every ounce of our toolbox in quantum fitness, whether it's NLP, whether it's hit healing, we use everything to basically make sure that the new neural pathways that we're creating in the brain get driven on. That's the only thing you need to do is drive on the dirt road until it becomes a road. What's going to be hard is those old roads is like a four-way highway that's open and it's very comfortable and familiar. The new roads are not familiar. You don't know exactly where they go yet. It's going to feel like a rookie and someone who has a big pride does not want to start at the beginning. They don't want to be a newborn. So you have to look at it like, okay, if I'm starting new, I'm not going to know what to do every day. I'm not going to know how to feel and I need to be okay with that. I need to be okay of going, if you look at the seven year cycle, which I will post, number one year is self-awareness. So the way that you build new neural pathways is you allow yourself to be self-aware. Like, wow, I didn't get triggered right there. Or wow, that really didn't bother me. Or wow, I didn't even eat that today. Self-awareness. Then instead of taking seven years, it will take about 
seven months to fully integrate this new butterfly if you practice, prepare, and play. So what you do in seven years will take you seven months of practice, prepare, play, and you'll have a completely different life. But you've got to show up as someone who trusts themselves, loves themselves, even if you don't. You know what I mean? Be the actor because the universe doesn't know the difference between imagination and real. And so how you behave is what the universe will bring to you in the form of props and co-creators. So if you're sitting here waiting, then it's going to give you people to help you wait. It's going to give you problems to wait you. Okay. If you're like, I'm just screw it. I'm doing it. I don't have any money. I don't have any time but I've got you know, five minutes here and I've got some old crafts and I'm doing it. I'm gonna practice my new self. My new self is an artist. She's a singer, she's a songwriter, she's whatever. And then you just start practicing it when you feel safe. And then the universe will be like, oh, let's build these new roads. She's driving on them. Because that's what happens when you drive on the roads. They become the new automatic normal that you don't have to think about. So you stop to start as a baby and a rookie and it's very awkward. But very soon, right, practice is what gets you to be an expert. Remember, experience is what creates the expert. It's not school. It's life, okay? So, yeah, I know it's scary. Like, oh, my God, I don't want those neural pathways to come back. I trust, trust me when I say when you get out of that ice and you feel really proud of yourself, your life's not going to be the same. It can't be because you didn't think you could even do it by yourself. And so all of a sudden, you feel confident, you feel brave, you feel strong, you feel alive. That's opposite of how you felt in the past. So you're going to behave differently. Okay. So it is a process, but when you look at it, either do it, do this process of biohacking, let's go through it quickly or do it the slow way in like physical reality where everything is literally designed to booby trap you. It's like, what do you have to lose here? Nothing. You have nothing to lose here except this old baggage. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? We got time for one more question. <laughs> Anybody? I have a short non-related question. Okay, go for it. About Mandela effects. I think I had one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're always having them, always. You can't do anything that doesn't affect the whole. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. I feel like I shared this in the video I posted that you didn't get a chance to watch. So, I'm asking now. The Mandela effect, long story short, was I was wearing a bra that I was positive the underwire was popping out of because I kept pushing it down. And when I woke up the next morning, I went to put the bra back on, and it, the wire is not popping out at all. The cloth, is, like, there's no hole. I can't find evidence of it. And I was like, what? Um, but I consistent with, like, quantum fitness one again. Like, I'm moving into quantum fitness two. And, mm -hmm. ooh, did I just quantum leap somewhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys are going to do this constantly. And you're also going to hit major glitches in the matrix where you're like, what the hell? Like, roads disappear, time changes. Because again, when you look at chaos, chaos is the storm you drive through to get to 5D, okay? And so you will literally, like we have had, you. some of you guys know my crazy stories. Like my son, we woke up one day and his fish was not in his bowl. We're the only people here. How does a fish get out of a bowl? Like to this day, it could not have leaped out of the bowl and gone somewhere. You know what I mean? Like we still ponder that one. So there's so many random things that have happened when you're quantum leaping that if you can celebrate it, like, oh, cool, I quantum leaped. I wonder what's going on in this universe. And then you notice what's different for the whole next 24 hours, you'll actually be able to stay in that timeline. But if you're just like, whoa, did I have a moment? And then you just keep driving as if you've always been driving, you'll go back to the old timeline. Because again, Everything in this universe that's on this planet is based in the tuning fork theory. Whatever is vibrating is going to suck you in. So if you are vibrating an old story, you're going to get sucked into an old story. All right. So hopefully that helps you out because we are definitely going back and forth between timelines. Like we're always shifting, always shifting, always shifting. You're never actually on the same timeline for very long. But because your beliefs are so rooted in indoctrination, they look very similar to each other. 
That's why once you actually go through the, this experience of your biohacking and you clear your trauma body, it's literally like being on a new planet with new people and new places, less ego, way more fun. But if you weren't, if you weren't really paying attention to how new you are, you could see a lot of similarities, but you just see everything differently. It's like you have different eyes. Because remember, trauma affects what you see, what you know, what you feel, what you taste, what you touch. That's why smells can just trigger PTSD. That's why I'm always talking about clearing your homes, getting your homes, getting smells, changing smells, changing colors, changing pictures, because you walk by it and you're so programmed to live there. You don't know that your subconscious is sitting there staring at a picture for 25 minutes when you were hurt by this person in this picture because you're already in the kitchen. But that just triggers PTSD and now your back hurts. Your lower back all of a sudden just starts hurting and you're like, I just don't feel supported. And it's because you walk by a triggered picture that you didn't even notice. That's how sensitive you are to your reality. Everything is a cigarette smoke that you're walking through and some of them are great and some of them aren't. So because you are influential until you fully repair your auric field and you have a force field again, you want to pay attention to how you feel around certain things and create your own safe little bubble or your own little nurturing, you know, sanctuary so that you can do your, you know, you can do your family interventions because that's really what it is. It's a family intervention. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. Hopefully the, her questions, I'm sure, helped because whether it's eczema or a money issue or a relationship issue or a time wound or whatever, I guarantee that it's relatable. Everything we just talked about is relatable because I could relate to her story a, a shit ton, excuse my language, like a lot. You know, when something is itching you, bothering you, you know, we, we don't want to deal with it because we think that as spiritual creators, that if we give it our energy, that we're going to somehow create our reality with it. And honestly, we create our reality with it because we're resisting and avoiding it. So you got to look at it, confront it, allow it, love it, and then change it. And then when you show up, you be the person that you always wanted to be. You be the mother that you didn't have. You be the father that you didn't have. You treat your inner child the way you wish you could treat your own child. And you live accordingly. I mean, it sounds very simple, but it does take practice because it goes against the grain of every single thing that you've been indoctrinated to learn. Because when you learn the opposite of this, you're very controllable. You know, fear governs your work ethic. Fear governs your family. Guilt and shame is how you parent and love. And it's not very fun here. Okay, so hopefully this guy this helped you guys. Next week we're going deep, deep into guilt and shame. It is a program. It is not real. When you use guilt to direct your life, you are setting yourself up for a major loop. Okay, when you look at someone and decide through shame whether they're good enough for you or not, you're setting yourself up for a major loop. So once I get done with this webinar. Obviously, we'll be in Ireland and Spain for almost three weeks, taking people through this experience. But when we get back, I am going to start my relationship alchemy course. And um, I'm still finishing the edits, but I'm talking about relationship with money, right? Health, time, your partner, your lack of partner, the person that you want to manifest, the person you wish would become your person. Because really, ultimately, there's so much delicious content that I've learned from biohacking people about relationships, because ultimately this biohacking process is to bring the unity of the family together within. That's the whole point of quantum fitness is to bring the unity of the mother, father, child back into oneness and unity so that you can be the most powerful creator. Your family is three solid fronts that create a triangle that become unlimited power from the cosmos. You do not need money. You do not need time. You do not need help. You are all the help you want. And then whoever shows up is a playmate at your playground. Life starts getting really fun. You don't need anything. You got everything you want, everything you need. And the funniest thing is, as some of you guys know, you know, that book, Conversations with God. Well, if you've been following me, I have spent probably half of my career studying the ego 
studying the dark side of ourselves. Why does ego do this? You know, how does it set this up? How do I, how do I know what the echoes are? Because to me, spirit is just illumination of God. It is, it's nothing really to study. It's pure positive energy. If you really want to know what's going on inside of you, you got to talk to the part of you that's haunting you. And that's who I have been literally embodied spirit gone down in the depths of hell and interviewed and interviewed and watched and listened and coached. And when I look at every root issue in relationships, I've made them all, all of the issues have come from the pain bodies activating against each other. But ultimately money has a pain body too, you guys. Time has a pain body. Your home has a pain body. Your car has a pain body. Anything that you've touched with your essence has a pain body. And I'm gonna show you how to work with all these different pain bodies so that you can co-create why it's healing. So it's super, super, super awesome. Like I've never been more excited about anything. But, but again, quantum fitness is now birthing all this cool clarity and it's not going to be like, you know, a year long or anything, but think about how many relationships that you have that are abusive, dysfunctional, unhappy, stuck, waiting, limiting, you know, like it's, and that, and the only person that you need to change is you, you don't have to change the money pain body because the main money pain body will change when yours changes. It's reflecting back because you've noticed some people don't have money problems. Why do you, right? Why do some people have plenty of time, but you don't? Why do some people have like great relationships and you can't find one? You know, why do some people have super healthy bodies, but you eat way better than them and you do way more for your body than them? Why? Well, that's your question. What and why? The how and when is the universe's job. And so I'll be acting through and channeling the universe on this one. And your job is just to come with your what's and your why's. All right. So we're going to wrap up our webinar and then we're going to take a little three week break. And then our classes in alchemy will resume because I have a lot of content for you guys. And then we'll be opening the apothecary in October. And I can't wait. So I will see you guys next week. And hopefully that helped Dominique. So we're all we're all cheering you on the me, myself and I. We are all your biggest cheerleaders because you deserve it. It's your time. It's your time to shine. But you're going to need all three of you and nobody outside of you. All right, guys. Love you. See you soon. Bye.